know, in Outlander, it tends to be there's a lot of candles around. You need to think about the level of the candle because it's always melting. You need to continue <laughs> topping up this candle and changing this candle so that it's always at half. Because, you know, you do take after take after take. It takes a long time. So, um, yeah, you need to really think about all these things and, and make sure that it's all succinct. Because you do get that one person that will be like, Starbucks cup. <laughs> yeah. That no Starbucks existed in the Game of Thrones universe, but yeah. it does. <laughs> This week I have Fionn Corbett joining me. Fionn is a Glasgow School of Arts graduate and has recently worked on the set of Outlander, the largest TV production to be filmed in Scotland. Welcome Fionn, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much for having me. Not at all, I'm excited to hear your news. So <laughs> what was your first idea of a dream job when you were still at school? Well, I suppose, I mean, when I was really young, my mum was an artist, I wanted to be an artist. And so I was always quite creative, probably inherited that from our family. Um, but I went through an awful lot of different ideas of what I wanted to do. Like I did drama, I was really into drama. So um, I was quite sort of keen on maybe potentially being an actress. Um, and then after that, it was kind of like, um, anything in the creative industry and then it was back to artist again it was a bit all over the place I think that when you're at school there's so many possibilities it's sometimes quite overwhelming and um, so yeah that was my sort of first kind of idea of a, of a dream job absolutely so. and it's as well at school it's quite hard to know what you'll like as well because you've got such a limited access to that so when you're saying you want to be an artist or an art an, um, actress it's two very different things, but what does that mean to your day-to-day -day life? And would you enjoy those bits of it? And that's quite hard to know when you're still trying to pick your subjects at school. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, you don't need to know. That's a really important thing is you don't need to know yet. You need to just be who you are and, and, and swim through that channel until you, <laughs> until you reach a destination where you go, ah, I'll just keep doing this because this is great. Absolutely, and I think that's not talked about enough, is that when you're 17, you don't need to know all the answers yet. Um, you might yeah. be applying to university for a topic that you're really interested in, but that might not be what your career goes to, and that's absolutely fine and so normal, and part of what finding a career is. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So you, at six year, decided to apply for the Glasgow School of Art. How was that experience? What was the portfolio system like? I think that they were quite sort of they're keen for you to have some life experience and and to show your your versatility coming in there and um, and uh, so yeah I think it's quite important to have a quite a broad portfolio and and try and show things that you're doing extracurricular as well as the stuff you've done in school because they've seen a thousand of those folios that are like here's my design and here's you know the way that the schools yeah. do it but if you go away and and really um, try and do extracurricular things then it shows that you're really really interested and really passionate about being an artist or being into into this industry so I was really lucky that my auntie lives in Brazil and um, she had kind of suggested that I might want to go to Brazil and she would pay my fare so I was like that's an opportunity but I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do that because I was like uni is really important everything in my life so far has been heading towards this point of going to the art school um, and then for that to be a bit of a whirlwind I ended up talking in my interview for the art school about how I didn't know what I was gonna do mm -hmm. and whether I should go to Brazil or whether I should like do this and then maybe have a gap year in the middle or something um, and these people were just like you should go to Brazil <laughs> oh, like, wow. right okay guess I'm not getting in but um, the uh, tutor, who I now know as Paul, was um, amazing and really lovely. And when I did my second interview, he remembered me and he was like, so we saw you like at the beginning um, when uh, you were going to go to Brazil and now you're in Brazil. So how's it going? And the second interview was just like, I just talked about how I'd been surfing yesterday and um, all the stuff that I'd been doing out there. So, um, so you went to art school after being in Brazil. 
was that what you expected? Was it harder, easier? What kind of side did you take on that? Um, I think that the, uh, it wasn't what I expected. The, the art school, I kind of thought it was going to be, here's how to do this. And here's it, like, today we're going to have a workshop on woodwork or today we're going to have a workshop on welding. And so I kind of thought, I'm going to learn all these skills and then I can use them for whatever I'm going to end up doing. Because mm. as we all know, still had not a clue what I was going to end up doing. Mm. Um, uh, so it wasn't like that it was very um sort of conceptual and teaching you to think in a different way it was very interesting um finding all these other people in my class who had totally different spans of work and mm -hmm. and different ideas so um i struggled a little bit with the the conceptual thinking it wasn't really my style i just wanted to make things that looked quite impressive or looked cool um, so I tended to collaborate quite a lot and be the problem solver to the academic thinker that I would partner up with. Um, so uh, I think that it worked out in a way, but definitely wasn't what I expected at all. It was, it was very different, um, but I would never ever regret it. It was, it was a really interesting experience. They do leave you on your own, like they give you a project and then they'll not see you for a couple of weeks of tutors and you're expected to be independent and come into the studio and work in the workshops and, and do stuff until the next time you meet your tutor and they go, okay, how are you getting on? And then they might guide you a little bit, but it's definitely a wake up call for, for being really independent. So, yeah. And that could be daunting. Very it is, it daunting. definitely is, yeah. yeah absolutely. So you got your art degree and then you fall out the other side and you're looking for a job. What was that experience like? Because I know I was terrified. Yeah, it is so scary. Like you get dropped in the middle of the ocean um, and are forced to sink or swim. But um, I had been working in a pub all the way through uni and had sort of quit at the end to do my final degree show which you spend a lot of money on. If you're planning on doing a degree show, you need to save up. Um, so that's something I learned. Um, so I kind of really needed a job straight away. So I ended up working in another restaurant um, and I really disliked it. I had, I just couldn't fathom it anymore. So I quit without anything to go to, which I wouldn't really recommend because it was really terrifying. It, it made it even scarier. Um, but I applied for hundreds of jobs, some of which that I thought I was perfect for, that I had all the experience for and didn't even get replies to some of them. Um, so yeah, it was really horrible, really scary, but you just have to keep going because there's been so many people in your situation already that have managed and made it. So, you know, there, there's going to be a way out. You can't lose heart in that sort of circumstance. Yeah. I think being open-minded is really, really important because you can't just expect that you come out of, I did sculpture and environmental art and become a sculptor. It's yeah. insane to think that that's like, it's like a one in a million chance. And there are people in my class that are doing sculpture. I don't know if that's their main jobs, but I know that they're posting about exhibitions they're doing and all sorts of stuff. And that's great that they found their niche and they, they did this course and that was exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah. But in my sort of respect, I was always doing sculpture because I thought I'll get to be exposed to the most materials and learn about them. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I've just come out the other end and gone, okay, well, I still want to be in a creative industry. And uh, I applied for everything. So, yeah. yep. And it worked out because you got a job on Outlander. How was that process? How did that happen? Yeah, well, during my many, many job applications, um, I was sent a, the Outlander traineeships, which they do every season so far. There's still a few seasons left, I'm sure. I don't know if they've um, confirmed the next couple, but there's definitely a season six <coughs> coming up. So, uh, yeah, they do traineeships every year, and I thought there'll be thousands of people applying for this. There's no point in applying, and I was encouraged to apply, so I thought, right, okay, well. Might as well, it's just another one on the pile. Yeah. Um, applied, um, I applied for actually a couple of the traineeships as well. And the other one I applied for was the locations department, which I had no idea what it was. So 
I was frantically emailing. I'd done two little tiny films with uh, Urban Croft Films, who are like a small uh, film company. They're a fantastic film company in Glasgow. Um, and they were like Creative Scotland funded. Um, and I'd done them. So I thought, I've got a little bit of experience, but not very much. And I don't know if this is going to help because it said that you needed a credit in a film to apply. Mm -hmm. But if anybody is thinking of applying, I don't think you really need the credit. I think that's maybe something that's that's projected on the application, but and I don't know. Um, so yeah, so I ended up applying. I got a phone call for the interview. I was totally over the moon excited. And then the interview I was petrified for and uh, came out of it thinking there's no way I've got that because the, the person interviewing me was uh, consistently kind of making me feel like I didn't want to be in the job. And what he really was doing was trying to make it like quite realistic and, and pointing out all the bad parts of the job so that I felt like, you know, I can take that on or, you know, to find out what my reaction was, I think is what he was doing. Or he just wanted to make me feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, so I ended up going through the interview going, yeah, no, I love long hours. They're my favorite. And uh, yeah, no, the heavy lifting's, yep, I can do that. Yeah, it's uh, so... Uh, yeah no and then got the the job and was just totally kind of perplexed as to why they'd chosen me mm -hmm. um but yeah no it was the best sort of fit in the door I could possibly have asked for mm -hmm. so yeah and it's led to two years of being in in the Outlander seasons as a locations assistant mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm hopefully moving on to a different department so yeah it's worked out really really well and what's a train, traineeship? Are you paid for that? Is it part-time? Is it full-time? What's the expectation? Yeah, the Outlander traineeships are organised by BEC2, which are like uh, um, the union for uh, entertainment and theatrical industries. Okay. So they pay for you. So Outlander's not actually, it's not costing them any money to pay for your traineeship. And it's actually a really decently, like I know that a lot of traineeships are really, sort of um badly paid and you have to like scrimp and save and have a part-time job on the side this one's actually really well paid it is long hours though but the film industry it just gives you a taste of what it really is like yeah uh, they also let you do a day with a different department um and i managed to wangle two days because i don't know what i'm going to do with my life <laughs> which is, seems to be a theme um, but again, that's okay. Like you just keep open-minded and do whatever is thrown at your way. Um, so I managed to wangle doing one day with prop making, which is what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and then one day with the special effects department, because I thought this, there's no other opportunity I'm ever going to get to spend a day with the, the special effects department. Absolutely. Um, it's a great experience. It was just the best fit in the door I could possibly have hoped for. Absolutely. So you went in as a locations trainee. Did you find out what locations are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, basically, the locations department deals with um, everything from finding locations to film at. So usually they'll get a brief from the art department of what they want aesthetically for it to look like. Okay. Um, and they'll have to go and find this place. So that usually happens there's like either a location scout so we've got in outlander because it's such a big production there's the location scout his only job is to go around the country and and find places that have a field beside a lake with trees on the side that the art department <laughs> wants when we're filming uh we have a sort of location assistant on set which is what i was basically training to be mm -hmm. um, where you would liaise with all sorts of different departments. It's a brilliant department to communicate with everyone and learn who does what and, and uh, to just make contacts because you have to talk to everybody. You need to find out what everybody's needs are on the day. Um, and then you'll facilitate all of those departments. And often you have to ask questions from the landowner if the director wants to film in a field beside um, the actual field that we'd got permission for, whatever. I mean, Outlander is basically fields, trees, and yeah. National Trust buildings. Um, so uh, it tends to be fields. But the main thing is to take care of the land you're stood on because it's still come down to you. When we all leave to go to a different location, mm -hmm. it needs to be pristine and left as it was. 
um, for the landowner because otherwise it'll cost the production more money to 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 make it better. So, what is an average day like? Out when do you turn up? When do you leave? What do you do in between? Uh, the filming day is like eight, 11 hours and then an hour for lunch. So in full, it's 12 hours. But in the locations department, because you need to like, you might need to open gates in the morning or like park people up so they know where they're going. Um, you will always arrive before everybody else, usually about an hour. Um, maybe even more if people have pre-calls. If they're coming in an hour before, you'll have to come in an hour before that. So it's a really long day. Like it is difficult, but um, it is an, an interesting place to be. That's amazing. That's really impressive. You would, I would never have known that it was an average 12 hours for everyone else as well. That's a long yeah. day on repeat of things yeah, happening. Really so what's the mentorship like on set and within your department? Is everyone quite supportive or because everyone's freelance, they are always looking for the next position? I think it depends on the person really. We've got, I think it tends to be people that uh, like working with other people will want to bring you everywhere they go, which is a lovely sort of family oriented kind of area. I think that more often than not, they're, they're there to help you and to, to get your job done as well as theirs. So it's quite nice in that respect. That's really impressive. What would your advice be to anybody right now, a young person still at school, thinking they might work, want to work on TV or film set, but not quite sure what to do next, what would you do? Um, my practical advice is get a driving license. Wow, it's that's the most, It's the most important thing. It's, it's almost impossible to get to a set on a location unless you have one. And I did end up getting given a van because the locations assistants usually get given a van, which was a whole nother experience because never driven a van before so it's, and uh, mentally just be open-minded like there's so many um different jobs within the film industry that nobody ever thinks of like even if you are really interested in carpeting or or building houses we have to build sets we have a whole construction department it's a whole department that that's uh, called the greens department and they have to cover things up and, and hang vines on things and like we're not allowed rhododendrons in Outlander because they weren't they hadn't migrated into the UK yet so they have to cover up rhododendrons because they're everywhere and um, so that's that's a whole other department and um, and you know you've got you always think about costume makeup I don't know directors blah 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 but if you even have like admin um sort of knowledge there's the whole de the production department who end up like booking hotels for the crew and and sorting out food for the crew and and uh, they tend to be like the administrators of everything and they liaise with the accounting department who like obviously do all the accounts and make sure people get paid and stuff like that so there's so many different little niches that um, you could get into with transferable skills if you have that sort of creative you feel like you want to do something creative, but you feel like you're boxed in by gardening or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a very versatile place to work. Yeah, absolutely. That's re really good insight as well, because you, you're right. You just think of the immediate contact of what you see on the screen. So there needs to be someone for that. Uh, the greens department was the main thing that I was pretty shocked at when I came like I was quite aware that there was loads and loads of departments but mm -hmm. never knew that the greens department even existed so mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. it's pretty crazy so impressive yeah so from your experiences and you've had two days in two different departments and you've worked alongside loads of departments now for two years have you decided on what direction you quite like to go next so I would quite like to move to uh, the art department, mm -hmm. um, which who obviously deal with the design of the of the show, and I'm quite interested in set dressing, um, because that was what I did on the two little tiny films that I did before coming on to Outlander, and I absolutely loved it. So what have you? Do you have you had a moment yet where you've been standing on set and you've thought, I've made it. Like this is I cannot believe I'm here. This is amazing. 
or are you looking forward to the next thing to think I'll, I'll have thought I've made it at that point? I think I was really excited the first ever time I was on a set because we had <clears throat> it's like a whole if anybody watches Outlander it was Wilmington is the place but it was it was this whole street that we've made like none of that's real it's all facades it's a humongous street it looks absolutely insane um, and walking through that thinking this is just crazy this is a crazy place and I'm, I'm working here so that was really cool um, and it's fun to tell people that you work on Outlander as well because it's something that people know about and I have lots of American and Canadian relatives who are obsessed with the show yeah. so I've gone up in their, in their books um, but yeah no I think that seeing the set was really cool um, but I think that because I'm not quite in the department that I want to be or I haven't found myself yet I don't know um, I haven't quite had that moment where I'm like, yes, this is it. But I'm supposed to be, if, when lockdown ends, mm -hmm. supposed to be going on to a job where I get to be in the art department on a BBC mm -hmm. job. So I'm really excited about that because I'm seeing it as a bit of a, that's my transition phase. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's really exciting. Really exciting. So what would you recommend if you're starting out in the arts and the performing and the whatever industry and you're going into new projects, what would you recommend remembering when you're dealing with all these new people and this environment to make sure that you're kept on and you're utilized? Um, I mean, everybody in the industry always, it sounds so cheesy, but they always say you're only as good as your last job because people notice things. Um, I think in my case, I've been really honest about how I wanted to move into a more creative department, which has really stood me in a good way because people who do care about me and do care about my career because they like to work with me um, have recommended me to art department people and, and just telling people that, oh yeah, I'd really like to be in this department instead of, I think I kind of made that decision quite early on because if you're keeping it to yourself, then people will just be like, oh, she's happy in, in her department, she's good at it, so that's great. You know, they'll never think about it. Whereas because I talked about it all the way through season four, I ended up getting a phone call during the summer when Outlander was on a break from um, an art director asking if I could come in to uh, cover somebody for two weeks in the art department on Shetland. And they just didn't know anybody that was available at the time. And it just took that, oh, Fionn said on set one day that she was interested in this, so let's give her a shot. Um, and that was brilliant. And it was the first little like taste I had into that department and, and started my understanding of, of their side of things. Um, and so, yeah, I think that you need to be, you need to have a really good work ethic, no matter what job you're doing. Cause you know, a lot of the locations job as well, you need to empty bins all the time, you need to pick up after people, you yeah. know, some people are just like, don't care about the environment, they're just like throwing cans everywhere, you know, so you need to, even if you're empty in a bin, do it smiling, you just need to really just grit your teeth and as, as rubbish as the job might be, you just need to do it 100% and, and show that you're, you're willing, no matter what, because that stands you in really good stead for any future jobs because they'll think that person's a grafter we're going to get that person on so yeah Absolutely. No. and i would say that for any position and any department anywhere i do the same you've got to be consistently positive and consistently on your game as much as you can be well thank you for your time i've really enjoyed <laughs> learning about all the things that you've been up to um, I hope this is helpful to anyone, I'm sure it will be, who's looking for TV and film as a career or even just into art or the Glasgow School of Art as an option. Um, it's amazing to hear someone who's recently graduated and doing amazing things. Well, thank you for having me. I've, I've had a great time and I'm, I really hope that somebody goes, I want to be emptying a bin on set. <laughs> <laughs>